Hello YouTube. In this video we're going to take another look at the MacBook Pro 2007. I decided to record this video because I actually installed Mac OS X El Capitan on it and uh, it actually it is running uh, quite a bit better than I expected at first. We still have the same basic configuration with the 2.4 GHz Core 2 Duo and uh, 2 GB of RAM and all I really did was install an SSD but it made um, enough of a difference to actually warrants not having Mavericks on the drive anymore. So in this video we're just going to take a look at uh, how El Capitan performs. As you can see right there it boots up pretty quickly despite this laptop just having a SATA 1 interface that is limited to 150 megabytes per second. Let me just log in here real quick and uh, let's take a look at El Capitan. Alright, so now that we've actually successfully logged on, well it is still finishing up so that's the load and menu bar. But after that we should be good. Okay, there we go. And I just have to disable Flux here real quick because it's going to interfere with uh, this video. Let's go to about this Mac so we can take a look at uh, the legit specifications. So let me zoom in there. Uh, you should be able to read that. It says MacBook Pro 15 inch, 2.4, 2.2 gigahertz with a 2.4 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, 2 gigs of RAM, and the NVIDIA GeForce 8600 and GT256. Alright, so that's all we really need to know in terms of specifications there. So let's take a look at how it performs. First of all, let's open up the web browser, as I usually do, and open up a random web page. This machine, of course, has 802.11n Wi Fi, up to 300 megabits per second. So, uh, network wise, there's no bottleneck going on while loading this website with our 50 megabits per second connection. Let's open up CNN, a little bit more heavy website, to see if uh, the CPU goes into uh, overspeed mode. It does not appear to do so, it actually cooled down to 47 degrees. And we can scroll through just fine. Some elements, no, they're all loaded, it's fine, this is as much as you're going to see. As you can see, it is perfectly smooth. So let's open up YouTube and watch a video there. Let's open this video from JS2 Sense here and go full screen. Let's see, we're running 720p here, which is the highest that really is useful on a display like this because it's a 1440 by 900 display. The lines across the display are just a refresh rate issue. I can't uh, fix that for you guys, so you'll have to bear with me. But the video is perfectly smooth. No skips, no stutters, nothing. And the CPU doesn't run all that hot either. The 720p YouTube is still perfectly watchable on El Capitan on its old laptop. I mean, it is approaching uh, 10 years old. This particular one was built in January 2008, so this one is just over 9 years old. But it's still a pretty hefty uh, age for a computer like this. So let's open up Microsoft Word now to see how that launches. Microsoft Office 2016 is notorious for being very, very slow on a Mac when it has to start up for the first time. And uh, definitely when you just have a hard drive, it's, it's, it's uh, enough of a drag to just not, to warrant not using it at all. So just stick to freaking Office 2011 or if you're more of an iWork guy, go that route, no problem there either. And as you can see, just perfectly smooth, no skipping. Every keystroke is registered just fine. We're not going to save that because it's BS. Uh, it's going to be the same for Excel and Keynote. Just, let's just launch them side by side, see what launches first. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah, there's Keynote. Let's open up a presentation here. It works fine. Let's close that. Delete. Here we can make an Excel thing. This is one of the uh, standard templates. Yeah, that's looking sharp. I don't know. Let's just uh, let's cancel. But you can definitely tell it's working just fine. And just moving around the operating system is very quick as well. And here we can just go through my purchased apps, for instance. You can scroll through them, we can install one. Apparently there's an update for this one. 
Well, let's install that update then. Yep, there's most definitely an update for that. I also have to update iPhoto apparently for compatibility reasons. But yeah, there's the update. It's it's pretty much done already. Um, I can open up the mail app. After just a little bit of waiting, there it comes. Open up the Photos app. Just a couple bounces. It's honestly really not bad. I mean, if I have to um, compare this to the Retina MacBook Pro that I used to own, uh, that was definitely a lot faster because it had PCI Express storage. And I'll fix that later. Um, it had PCI Express storage, so it was super, super fast. But you know, if I compare it to this, it's not even all that much of a difference. It's not as big of a difference as I initially expected. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I can definitely say that El Capitan is, is working absolutely perfectly on this old uh, MacBook Pro. And if you have one of these, you, you and you're just, you know, hauling off, you're still running Snow Leopard, for instance. Uh, if you have 4 gigabytes of RAM, or maybe even 6, which is the max these will take, it's definitely worth it to just uh, take the jump to El Capitan. It's the best way to actually stay updated for just a little bit more before you retire the machine. In my case, I'm using this particular model of this case design because I have uh, very fond memories of these. I absolutely love the design of this laptop. And I just want to keep it around. Um, not as a daily driver, I, I use this occasionally, uh, but just as you know, a reminder of the days where Apple was really on, on top of their game um, in terms of design. You could st you can still service this machine just fine. You can't really do it on the Retinas at all, uh, especially not the new 2016 models. Um, but that's just a totally different story. I hope you got an idea, a general idea of how this system performs. I mean, as you can just see, moving on to the operating system is, is absolutely a blast on El Capitan. If you have some money laying around, you already have a machine like this with 4 gigs of RAM, put in that SSD, install a fresh copy of El Capitan, and you're just off to the races. Performance is absolutely stellar, even on 2 gigs of RAM, and it's just going to get better and better and better uh, if you install 4 gigs of RAM and this SSD. That, that combination will be killer. And uh, you'll be able to run pretty much the latest apps that are still out there on a machine that is 9, almost 10 years old. Well, that's pretty amazing, don't you think? Especially if you don't, really don't want to run Windows on a machine like this. Um, I wanted to on my 2006, but I'm definitely not going to on this one. This is absolutely fine on Mac OS X. And El Capitan is new enough to um, be very familiar to me and uh, to make me able to use all the apps that I need on a machine like this um, that are still pretty current. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. And don't forget to uh, drop a like, subscribe if you want to see more of this, and you can always send an email to the email address listed in the outro.